18, welcome in. How you doing today? It's a beautiful Sunday here in California. I'm glad to have you. That's a pleasure to be here. 18, the uh, pillar of the Power Cagers, one of the longest uh, running members, one of the OGs, the original Power Cagers. Um, 18, I have a very serious question to ask you, and I don't, I don't usually do this right off the bat. I try to hit people with a light question, but this is, this is uh, getting right to it. We uh, hit you with the hard hitting stuff. What do you have to say to people that say the Edmonton Oilers colors are orange and blue, not copper and blue? I mean, I'm pretty indifferent, honestly. Uh, I'm okay with both. Most people that I know are okay with both. I guess a little bit of a misconception with some people that get really upset if you say, like, oh, blue and orange, it should be copper and blue. The copper and blue seems like the more, like, old-school way of saying it. Yeah. But, like, obviously in, like, today's generation, people just... I didn't... I didn't get him to break at all. I got a very serious answer about a, about a, a borderline ridiculous question. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's here official like a referee with a whistle all right yeah. i got a game i got a game for you 18 and it's all based around your edmonton oilers it's a game yeah. i made up this morning with the help of mrs teal shark who's an amazing producer of this channel and she uh we came up with sign murder trade oh, yeah boy. sign murder trade but the people involved are going to be Oilers. So sign, murder, trade. Nail Yakupov, Mike Smith, Dave Tippett. Sign, murder, trade. He wants to murder all three of them. That's the trick to the question. Oh, boy. Um, that is a tough one. <laughs> to sign, tough one. The hardest one is who are you going to sign back? You. Definitely trade Yakupov. Trade Yakupov. <laughs> oh, wait. No, sorry. No. Wait. I'm murdered. Wait. <laughs> I can't go back. <laughs> the only reason you don't want to trade Yakupov is because then you'll have to either sign Mike Smith or... <laughs> murder, dude. Oh, boy. That's a great this game. A okay. Sign like, no trade. offense. Like, okay, I'll go with this. It's like, no offense to Dave Smith, but you know, I'm sure he's a great human being and all that. But he really kind of killed the team's confidence last year. I'm gonna have to put the knife to him, unfortunately. Oh! And I really don't want to sign Mike Smith. Can I second? I think we'll make it so I can sign Yakupov and trade Mike Smith. Yeah. Like. So, so guys, this, this just in: Dave Tippett is being murdered <laughs> for murdering his team's uh, confidence. Mike Smith gentlemen, got traded, which that trade. should have happened a long, long time ago. And the news uh, uh, of the day, the breaking news, breaking news, Edmonton Oilers are bringing back the nail, baby. They're bringing back Nail Yakupov to play with Connor yeah. McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl. Man, it's going to be what, – what do you think that would look like the first day? I mean, all the yeah, act would have to do is just stand in one spot and just let the two guys work their magic, just get over and shoot the puck. Pretty easy. Wait a minute. Are you advocating openly for Nail Yakupov to come back and play with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl? Well, Yakupov had really good chemistry with McDavid in uh, McDavid's rookie season. Then when, I think it was when McDavid got injured, uh, Yakupov kind of lost his place. And when McDavid came back from his injury, the coach didn't put Yakupov back with him, and that pretty much... Okay. Well, let's entertain. Let's entertain this crazy idea with one of the best at uh, numbers that I know when it comes to talking hockey. What's the mm -hmm. price? What's the window of price that you would pay to have Yakupov come back? You don't have to work it into your actual account. If a team was going to take a chance on Nail Yakupov, what should they? Uh, you're there. You're the agent, or you're running the team. What's the number look like? A bit of a risk because he hasn't been in NHL for a while. The people kind of kind of on him. Um, honestly, if you really want to come back, maybe like a one year in league min, like 750k. Yeah, one maybe, year league minimum. Times, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but to add to that, I would probably sign him to a PTO first to see how he does in training camp. Yeah, I got you. Before signing him to the right, one exactly. Give him. You're gonna give him a 10 day. Is that what I'm kind of give him a little 10 day contract before you give him a one yeah. year league minimum? 
Yeah, that'd probably work out. Yeah, I'd give him a ten day two way contract, and when he fucks up, like we all, I mean, I mean, and when, yeah. and when, no, no, he, yeah, yeah, he'd be fine. On the eleventh day, he'd be back to being Nail Yakupov somewhere doing something. But you know, I hope he's doing well. I'm just want you. I'm just glad that 18 uh, denied murdering you, Nail. So just understand that <laughs> uh, you don't want to murder the Nail. 18, we're going to get a lit into a little bit about what 18 uh, likes. Uh, a little yeah. bit more than just hockey, things of that nature. What's a, what's an artist that you're listening to that's on your Spotify, Spotify that maybe people don't listen to enough? Give me, give me one of your artists. Uh, I've gotten a lot of flack from this, honestly. Uh, just because of the person that I am. But I'm a really big fan of like Nickelback right now. Yeah! Hey. That's all right. You're a rock star. Yeah, yeah Nickelback's pretty good. Anybody that says Nickelback isn't good is a, is a goddamn hipster. I'm just going to say, it. Nickelback is it's an anomaly because you have people that are hipsters calling people that like Nickelback hipsters. You get it's it's stupid. I can think of at least 3 good Nickelback songs, and if people don't like Nickelback, they can just fuck right off. That's what I tell them. But I'd say um rock star is probably the one that's trending for me right now. Yeah, uh, so they don't have any new stuff out. You're just kind of like it's it's got nostalgia to it. It's stuff that a lot of times you go back and listen to it. Yeah, pretty I agree. much. Yeah, yeah, I like <laughs> it too. I even like uh, some like puddle of mud and stuff. They don't get as much crap, but same kind of premise, you know. So, all right, everybody, very surprised. We interviewed 18, who's uh, from Edmonton, and he said that he loves Nickelback. You're not helping with Canadian stereotypes right now, 18. I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing my best. <laughs> Bond, yeah, guys. This this one might tip. This one might tilt the thing. What do you, what's a what's a movie that you think not enough people have watched that you personally like? Oh boy, I'm a I'm a big fan of comedies. Um, I the one movie I really did enjoy was I think it was called Run Fat Boy Run. Run Fat Boy I, Run. Yeah, I don't know if you guys, if you guys have seen it personally, but I watched it like yeah. the first time, like way back when, and I just kept watching it repeat. Is it that hilarious? Funny. It's pretty funny. Yeah. What's the <laughs> premise? I believe it was, I believe it was uh, this guy who was with this girl, and I guess they they know a little bit about falling out, and, and efforts to try and get back with her. I guess. Yeah. He just went like a marathon with this guy, and I guess through her, and he's still kind of it. That's yeah. kind of the gist of it. You guys have to watch it for yourself and maybe yeah. can form your own opinion. It's a movie that I found that was extremely funny and would watch it even today. I guess. Can watch it anytime and it's still pretty funny? Still pretty funny, yeah. Right on. I'll have to watch it because I haven't watched it, but the title makes me intrigued enough. <laughs> I think, I like I think you would like, still like it, honestly. I feel like it's I I would rent it, but I would just start running because I would see it as instruction. You know what I mean? I'd be... I, I'd be motivated by such movie. <laughs> it probably would be pretty good for like a little watch party for you guys, too. Yeah, check it out. That'd be do that. Everybody, but then I'll have to dress up like the guy. I'm sure I can do it. I'm sure I can. Oh, yeah, it. You, you could probably dress up like him. Oh, I'm yeah, well, now I'm going to look at what the cover of it looks like, and we'll do a follow-up video about how I could definitely pull that off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 18... This is a great question. If 18's out on the town or he's looking for a date, I don't know how that works anymore. I don't know if it's online. I don't know whatever. But if 18's looking for a date, what's more important, that they're an Oilers fan or that they hate Mike Smith? It's more important. Jeez. Um, I mean, if they're a fan of the Oilers, I mean, no matter what, that's kind of number one on my list there. Right. Because Mike Smith, at this point, I don't no disrespect to Mike Smith. It's kind of an afterthought for him now, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. That's how it goes. Okay, but but weather fan for sure, that'd be pretty awful. Awesome. Okay, but if if that's your answer, the reason I asked you that is because it's always kind of a setup. So you fall in love and you're having great chemistry, and they're an Oilers fan. But part of them being an Oilers fan is like, you know, who's been the best thing that ever happened to the Oilers? Mike mm -hmm. Smith. We are lucky to have such a great goalie as Mike Smith. And they're dead serious about it. There's no sarcasm. You guys eat the same food. You love the same music. You're both rocking out to Nickelback, rock star. But, she, but it's absolutely imperative that you respect their love for Mike Smith. Is that going to work out? 
I can forgive and forget some things, and <laughs> if that's what makes it work, <laughs> and I can't go wrong. You can't All go right. wrong with that. I think you're signing yourself up for some trouble there, because you guys, you're gonna oh, love, man. you're gonna love talking Oilers, but that's like saying I love talking about baseball, but I only like talking about the times I didn't wear a cup and got kicked in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> so they're gonna be talking. <laughs> it's uh, I guess it's talking about the Oilers, but it's gonna oh, hurt. Man. Yeah. It's gonna hurt, yeah. What I'm trying to say is, Mike Smith, you're a bum. You need to get the hell out of there so that the Oilers can win a couple championships so that my buddy 18 can be correct about everything else he says. Because he's always right that they had a great playoffs, and then he's also right about Mike Smith is a bum. So, I'll just... And don't call me Mike Smith anymore because it hurts, all right? I'm just going to I'm just gonna take this moment. Point. It hurts because it's, it's a real painful, painful thing when I'm playing bad at goalie and I get called Mike Smith. Like, I just want to let you know that, 18... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. No, it's not because of me. It's not because of me. It's because Mike Smith's a horrendous goalie, and I, I'm on my worst day. I'm at least like a Koskinen. You know what I mean? So I'm at least at a lower budget and doing terrible is what I'm trying to get at. So get yeah. exactly. <laughs> All right. Here's a great question. If people are going to Rogers Place Arena, mm. uh, money's tight for everybody these days. Eighteen. Give the people uh, a tip on what is the best way to spend a $20 bill at Roger's Place on anything. Ooh, well, I went to a watch party one time when I was working for the last, uh, playoff last season, and mm-hmm. obviously the food prices are pretty high for the most part. Uh, for $20, you could probably get yourself like a pretty big bag of popcorn, uh, maybe a poutine and a drink for like I want to say third, I don't know, maybe fifteen, sixty dollars, something like that. No, because if you buy like a little bit of a bundle, they do like you do get some of the money like kind of taken off, like a little bit of a discount. Oh, regard. so you could get a combo? Kinda, yeah, something like that. But it would be—I don't know if it was just for staff only because it was the watch party only people, but. Yeah, that was, I'm thinking, you if you got a popcorn, a poutine, and a drink, that was just for staff. So I'm going to accept that answer, but I'm, I'm going to follow it up with a, since we went the food route, what are, mm-hmm. since I said $20, what are the beer prices for people? And honestly, real quick, let me, before I do that, mm-hmm. let me answer my previous question. The best way to spend $20 at Roger's Place is to tip your servers and tip the help and tip everybody that's making everything, do everything the way they need to make it run out there. So make sure you give 18 a 50, give everybody else a 20 and keep it rolling. That's, that's the way to do it is in my opinion. But what are the beer prices at Rogers arena right now? Like a standard beer, um, like for any, for them probably be, ooh, I think it's like $8, eight or $9. As of like last season, I don't know if price is going to change, but I think it's somewhere, somewhere along that line. Eleven dollars, I think, is the highest. Yeah, I'll, uh, when so I went to serious. San Jose games, they were like nine, around nine bucks. But I've heard that it, a lot of sports uh, teams, especially baseball, I think baseball, um, football, I think possibly has the highest prices to try to deter people from getting into as many fights because football is pretty notorious for that. It but, is. but there's a lot of places baseball that are selling them for like fourteen fifty, like a beer. Yeah, wow. yeah. I feel like. What's like, is it, is it a lot of beer? Like, is it just like a can? Um, what's crazy is at the, uh, at, um, SAP Center, it's like a 20 ounce, not a, not a 24 ounce, but a 20 ounce beer would be like, yeah. I think like nine bucks, like what you're saying. But the same, the same beer, if it's at like Yankee Stadium or certain, certain places that have, uh, you know, I guess more bigger market teams that I guess can get away with charging it. I don't know what the algorithm for that is, but yeah, it's like fourteen fifty for the highest prices for pro sports. And the scary thing is, is when you're charging that price, they're saying that they charge that price to try to deter some of the uh, people that are coming in from getting too drunk. But the truth of the matter is, if anybody knows anything about alcoholism, that guy's still going to buy the six beers that he was going to buy anyway. He's just going to pay the extra money for them. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, no. Um... There we go. Clear. Obviously, it's going to be tougher for some people to want to purchase food in the arenas, but for like a first time thing, it's always nice to experience what the food is going to be. Yeah. You kind of already know what to expect, but you know, you get the vibe when you're eating. And also, also you know, going off of your prices, uh, that's the American dollar, then Canadian prices. Yeah. Well, I'm, what you're saying, so. 
Yeah, I, I understand. So when you're saying the nine, I got you. Yeah, there's actual, there's a conversion as well. Yeah, so it might be mm-hmm. closer or different either way, depending on where you're at. But so Edmonton, what? So you're saying when you said nine dollars at Edmonton, that's not nine dollars American. That's nine dollars no. Canadian, obviously. Canadian. All right, and mm-hmm. whatever the conversion is, I got you. So um, I'm pretty stupid. Canadian dollar is higher or less as of. So like, if you're paying nine dollars Canadian. That's that's uh, more. It would basically be like seven dollars American, or is it the other way? Um, I believe, or it, yeah, basically. So like, if you were about to buy something like twenty dollars American, Canadian probably would be like twenty five. Gotcha. Twenty six, something like that. Yeah. Gotcha. So we're paying a little bit more. Yeah, and you know what makes me uh, helps me with the reference is all the times I was buying books as a young man, and on the back it says U.S. And then it says Canadian. Remember that every single novel that you would buy? I don't know why they did that, but it's because obviously they were going to sell it in all of North America. But as a mm-hmm. young kid, I remember just the actual seeing it's U.S. And it was always a two, like a $2 difference, U.S. to Canadian. So for whatever <laughs> that little spiel is worth. Uh, 18, what is your favorite food? I know this turned into a food conversation, but that's, that's what I do. I'm a foodie. What's your favorite food? It doesn't have to be at the arena. I definitely enjoy the steak. That's one, but I'm also a big fan of chicken and pasta as well. So you're like you're basically like a chicken fettuccine alfredo or a big old okay ribeye kind of guy. What kind of steak? What's your cut? It's a toss up between ribeye and t-bone. Honestly, I honestly fifty fifty for both. I, I enjoy both of them. Mm. Uh, just medium rare all the time. Medium rare all the time. Yeah, not. Not too bloody, but definitely has to have some color in it. I hate when the steak's all the way brown, all the way through, or gray. That's no good. Mm -hmm. Um, Have you ever had, do you ever have porterhouse? Because you you say you had a, you like T-bone. And a Mm T-bone is essentially just cut further down from the same cut that a porterhouse is. And when you're having a T-bone steak, one side of it is a New York strip. And that other side, that little bit that's on the other side, is a part of a filet mignon. And the only difference between a T-bone and a porterhouse is the porterhouse actually has the full filet on one side and the full New York strip on the other side. And that's they call it a couple steak because they think that some people are gonna oh. one's gonna eat one side and one's gonna eat the other. Now nah, you get two of them. But oh, yeah. Ooh, wow. Yeah, I would say if you like T-bones and you like ribeye, next time try a porterhouse because anytime you get bone-in steak, it's better because the flavor kind of like off the bone. Uh, it goes nice. through the steak and it uh, it causes it to dry out a lot less and at a slower pace. So usually they can cook it better. But next time you uh, go and you're and you're ordering steak, if they have porterhouse, get yourself a porterhouse. Yeah, for sure, it's very yeah. promising. Absolutely, I'm a I'm a steak guy myself. Like I said, do you like do you like seafood? Yeah, I like seafood. You're big. Uh, I like seafood because it's so easy to make and it doesn't take very long either compared yeah. to like your usual meats and stuff. So, Are you I like, like all kind of seafood guy? Or like, Because when people ask me I like seafood, I'm like, I'll eat shrimp, uh, I'll eat crab. I like a lot of other seafood if it's deep fried. But are you a guy that mm-hmm. likes, you'll like eat like just a, a baked fish filet? You like any, any oh, seafood? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like I'll eat pretty much anything like shrimp, fish, lobster, crab, all that type of stuff. Anything. Right. Any type of crustaceans are usually my favorite ones too. Very big fan of that. Crabfish as well, crawfish, all that type of stuff. That's awesome. Good stuff. Uh, yeah. We'll have to do a crawfish boil or something at some point. Make it extra yeah. spicy. I know you like spicy food. Is that a spicy? You prefer spicy, right? Am I? Have I been picking up on that the right way? As far as when um, we talk about foods. I don't know if it's like more preferred. It's just like I have to be like in the mood for spicy. You know, sometimes like if I'm really feeling it, I'll. Love like something super spicy. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I like something really mild. Uh, yeah. It just kind of depends on the day, honestly. Yeah, I feel you. It's not fun eating something that's really, really fiery hot in a hundred degree weather outside. I, but winter time, I'm I'm putting a lot of hot sauce in my chili, kind of thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Are the Edmonton Oilers going to win the cup in the next three years? Obviously, as a biased Oilers fan, I believe we can do it. We have the right pieces. Um, like I said, Connor and Leon, they're pretty much like entering their primes right now. And this is probably the best window that they kind of have in the next two to four years. So hopefully we can take advantage of that. Yeah. 
I think okay. that uh, they possibly could. Again, I, I say the Mike Smith thing so much that it almost is comical and people think I'm being a kind of like just trying to make a joke. But all jokes aside, it's a situation where if they don't win a cup, it will be because of goaltending in a lot of ways. Now, whether that's Mike Smith or not Mike Smith, that's that's fair to not put it all on him. The coaches hired him, they signed him, all those things. Um, but I think it'd be a travesty if they don't win a cup in the next three years. I think Connor McDavid is that much of a generational talent. You'll start to hear chirpings. Um, I've seen a lot of dudes. I've never seen anybody as good as Connor McDavid, but I've seen a lot of guys that are the shit in their league and they don't win where they're at and they eventually go somewhere else. Um, And I really think that that leads me to my next question is if the Oilers don't win a championship in the next three years, what's that look like for uh, Connor McDavid? I know he's under contract. I, I know a lot of people will talk contract when you ask that question, but those things can be circumvented if if if, if need be, one way or the other, I believe. Um, well, the kicker for that is dry title contract ends a year earlier, so that's going to be the big one. Um, I could see it coming down to whether if dry title wants to stay long-term, even after all that, I think McDavid would probably fall suit. dude. I just don't see McDavid as a guy that gets... Like, he, he's a type of guy that's like where he's at right now. He just wants to win, like, for the city that he's in. I don't think he's going to try and bail on that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think just him, like, as a person, but from what, from what I know anyway, and I just feel like he's kind of too prideful for that, and I think he wants to keep him trying to get to the end here. Yeah. I think in three or four years, if we still don't win, I think as long as we have the right pieces going and we're still kind of winning at that, I think they'll look more, especially driving the world here. Yeah, so it does hinge a lot on dry sidle staying in some ways. Um, so I'll ask you that same question, then, and I'll, I'll kind of follow up on that question. I, I First of all, I agree that if they don't win it in three years, it doesn't mean everything. He doesn't seem like the guy that's really going to cut and run. But with that being said, if they don't re-sign dry sidle and they haven't won a championship, uh, does that change things for McDavid? Does he start – is it possible he starts – St- or he stops being such an honorable stand-up guy and starts hunting for championships? Well, that's a tough one. Uh, if Dreisaitl was to say, hey, I figured out, like, he wasn't going to sign, and McDavid was talking about Nick, I think, I, I really think he would still want to stay if he knows that we're still doing good as a team, right? Um, like, say Dreisaitl, which would be a big one. Losing a guy like Dreisaitl's helper is a pretty big blow to your team. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that would probably be a little bit dense to know what to say, but I McDavid might really, see it as a challenge, though, in some ways. He might, and he's the kind of guy that boys just kind of reminds me of the Cajun in my pressure situation. But if I was going to tell here, he's going to be trying to figure out a way to build on with this club. Wouldn't be as easy, but mm-hmm. I still think, I, I think McDavid would just, I don't, I don't think he would uh, be the type of guy that would be. You think that's me being a bias on this hand. Sure, a lot of people would be like, oh, no, maybe I would probably be able to first chance he gets but well i i think there's two different types of ways this happens because i'm a niners fan and when jerry rice left it was after he was basically past his prime and it wasn't a big deal uh like a lot of people were pissed that he played for the raiders and uh for denver i think but the truth of the matter was is that it was it was at a point where he was doing nothing but elongating his career he wasn't really shitting on the niners in any way i hope that uh that Connor mcdavid stays an oiler his entire career but I also, like, when I was a, a fan of Jerry Rice and he went to the Raiders and became their, like, number two receiver instead of being buried on the depth chart and I got to watch him continue to play for, like, three more years, selfishly I was very happy that that happened. Like, I, I feel like if Connor McDavid and Dreisaitl don't stay together, uh, I, first of all, I think that'll happen. I think they'll bend, they'll bend as many things as they need to to make sure that that happens. But if they don't stay together and they don't win championships, I think at some point in his career, he might, Connor McDavid might take like the last three year tour to kind of like go over to a Penguins team or a Rangers team or somebody that wants him on their second line to just make their team ridiculous. Do you see that happening? Oh, well, me personally, no. But obviously, if a guy like Gretzky could get traded, for example. <laughs> I mean, anything, anything can kind of happen. So, personally, I wouldn't want to see that mm-hmm. uh, for my sake. But I think just the type of people that they are, I, I feel like they, no matter what, they want to try and see it through here more than anything. Yeah, I think he's going to be. Because we as fans deserve it. 
Yeah, t- I totally agree with that because he's been a blessing in a lot of ways. Connor McDavid, they've, you guys like. There's a lot of jokes. I was I was a Sharks fan, and I know like a lot of jokes, like choke choking and all that, whatever. But the first round uh, draft pick jokes for Edmonton. First of all, nobody nobody knows that they could have drafted better in those same scenarios. Nobody knows that they could have developed those talents a lot better. Um, honestly. You look at Sagan, where he's at in his career, and Hall. Those are two guys that I thought probably would have had a more illustrious careers either way. Um, Nail Yakupov, that's kind of a you know a Ryan Leaf type situation. Shit happens, but there's a lot of people that give Edmonton a lot of shit, and I think it's it comes from a lot of hatred from the old Edmonton days when they were just really, really, really good with Gretzky and everything else. I think there's a lot of people that just really want to find their find their low blow that they can kind of throw at Edmonton, and so that's why honestly. Uh, with that and with Evander Kane playing for him, uh, and honestly, Connor McDavid being a generational talent, I I like the Oilers a lot. Like, my team's Seattle, um, but for for both reasons, I, I talk about, like, uh, we talk about Mike Smith. Seattle, um, take a second, if you could, to talk about some of their young talent, and I'll say the same thing. It won't matter what happens in front of them as long as if Grubauer is a fucking sieve. So like I said, I'll say the same thing about my own team. Goaltending is still the most important thing in the game. But uh, tell me something about Shane Wright because I don't know shit about Shane Wright. I don't know much about my own team. My knowledge right now, um, Shane Wright, uh, before his draft year, he was, like before the COVID thing happened, he was like considered a like an exceptional player. Mm-hmm. I believe he was granted exceptional status, counting with like David, you know, Tavares, Ekblad, all those type of guys. So, like, he was supposed to be, like, the next, like, big thing. Um, and then, obviously, when that COVID year happened, it uh, kind of halted everything. And Shane Wright actually didn't play for a whole season. And, obviously, if you don't play for a whole season, that's going to affect your development progress, especially mm-hmm. at that age. Um, and so, I think, obviously, then when the draft actually came, he split all the way to the floor. I don't think it was because of, like, his play or whatnot. I think it's just, I think... Montreal, they really, they, Montreal really wanted, like, offense. Obviously, yeah. Slavkovsky mm-hmm. obviously has a high-end feeling for that. Yeah. Whereas Shane Wright, he's not, Shane Wright's not exactly like a, he's not like a Barzell, he's not like a McKinnon, he's, not like that. he's more of like a, a Bergeron, a Couturier. Uh, a Denault? Like a, a Phil Denault? Yeah, Phil Denault, Phil Denault, with offense, yeah. Okay. But Shane Wright's the type of guy who will, you will get a 200-foot game from him. Mm. He's a good leader in the room. What's uh? What does Seattle need to do other than get rid of Grubauer to improve? Now that they got some young talent, I know they got uh, Burkowski and whatnot, but how are those guys gonna fit in? That's that's a better question. How are the guys uh, Bjorkstrand and Burkowski gonna gonna help out? Well, Bjorkstrand, uh, very good forechecker. He played for I believe was Columbus, right? And yeah, he's a very good forechecker, right shot. Uh, Burkowski, two-time cup champion, very skilled. Um, can't believe Kyle didn't want to retain him, but kind of didn't want to get it. Burkowski brings a lot of skill, and flashiness. Um, well, you guys understand me. Those two main guys, right? Burkowski and Jorker? Yeah. And I think, yeah, so if you surround those guys with the young talent they have, like Matty Veneers, right? Both the guys, like Jared McCann over there, you still got Everly, yep. you know, Yanni Gord. Like, you guys have a lot of skin. It's just a matter of inflating those kids with the, with the older guys and trying to balance up the lines as best as possible. I don't believe Seattle would be a playoff team, per se. But uh, I feel like they'll be better, better this year than one. 18? 18? They won't be a playoff team? I'm not even going to watch Sorry. the goddamn season then. I'm done. I'm not even turning on the season. I'm going to be a... I'm gonna be a I'm going to be a pissy ex-Sharks fan. That's what I'm saying. People are like, hey, are you a Seattle Kraken fan? They're like, no, they don't even make the playoffs. 18 said they're not going to make the playoffs. I'm not even rooting for them. Screw that. You know I'm a front runner and a Sharks <clears throat> and a Sharks fan. Those two, that sentence doesn't that doesn't run I mean, well. Well, I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's just I feel like Seattle is just not quite there yet. Yeah. Just let their young guys kind of play a season out first, kind of see how everything goes, and then from there you just keep adding pieces yeah. until, uh, until they mature. But the Pacific Division... But the Pacific Division, I think, got a little bit weaker in a lot of ways. That's I what my, that's what my hope is. My hope is that the Pacific Division kind of is bad enough to where Seattle can squeak in. And I think that if Grubauer plays hot, like which is a weird thing to say, but even with Mike yeah. Smith, even with Mike Smith, they're they're two dudes that 
in a one-off game, the reason that they're still in the league is because in a one-off game, they can get hot, bro. Like, Mike Smith's a huge goalie. He can he can have games where he just shuts shit down. And that's why it's – goalie's the hardest thing in the world because it's consistency. And I don't know that mm-hmm. either one of those guys has it, but when they're at their top of their game, they can steal a game for you for sure. Both of those guys. Yeah. Um, 18 – I could ask you questions all day, and we're going to have to do this uh, another time a lot more often, but I don't want to keep you too much today. I want to ask you, um, mm-hmm. what do you got going on streaming-wise? What, what are your plans for NHL 23? Because the Cagers are going to be going strong in NHL 23. I'm going to be playing some Chell and some Hut, but what's 18 going to be doing? Let everybody know where we can find you. Well, for my Twitch schedule, um, I don't really have anything planned yet, just because, you know, but my new job starting next week. Um, my schedule's going to be a little bit kind of all over the place. Uh, in terms of NHL, I do plan to hopefully stream some games on my channel. Uh, I'm pretty excited for NHL 23, of course. I'm going to with the Canadians and the boys. Um, I believe my new Pokemon game is coming out, too, in end of, around the end of November, November 19th. Mm-hmm. And... I don't know if I'll be streaming the whole entire series on the channel just because the game is so much fun. I want to play it on the stream. So. Yeah. If you guys see me streaming Pokemon, don't expect it to be like an entire like, whole story <laughs> gameplay. It's going to be more of like, I'll play one day, mm. and then the next time I stream, it's like, oh, Steven's already beaten the game, or he's beaten the game already. And yeah. so, like, I don't have a streaming schedule as of yet. Still working on that, but you'll see me from time to time. Yeah. Just look for my uh, handle at the level. Our Hell yeah, I look forward to it. And next time uh, we do this, like I said, we'll, we'll get the schedule figured out, but we're going to do a segment called uh, called Power Cagers. I'll figure out a better name for it, but what I'll do is I'll name off each Power Cager to you, and I'll give you some time to think about it, and you'll tell me the best thing about their game. And then and then since I play bad since I play bad cop, I'll say the worst thing about their game. No, I won't. No, I won't. Just joking. We're just gonna say the best thing about their game. We're just gonna only the best thing about their game. That's fine. And I'm and I'm exempt from the competition because I play perfect hockey, right? <clears throat> yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. All right. We better we better get out of here before we get ourselves in trouble. Eighteen. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for doing this. And like I said, we'll do it more often. Congratulations on your new job. Congratulations on everything. I uh, love you, brother. And thank you very much for all the uh, all the help that you've given to me on the ice, in streaming, in Discord. I hope you know that Mrs. TLI, the whole family, we love you very, very much, bro. No, thank you. And thank you, Mrs. TLI, as well. Appreciate you guys. Love you both. All right. I love you, buddy. We'll talk to you later.